Now, a lot of you who've been tying for a while may have heard of this book, Schmuckler and Seals, Forgotten Flies, published in 1999. This really is a monster of a book. 550 pages, high gloss, big pages, and the thing weighs 11 pounds. Now, I don't recommend this book to a casual tire. It is a little hard to find, and it'll end up costing you anywhere between $500 and $1,200. But it is an amazing book. The first 499 flies in it are by Ray Bergman. They're pretty much every fly in his 1938 trout. But the next 725 flies in it are by a guy named Charles DeFeo. Now, probably a little bit lesser known than Bergman, but certainly no less accomplished of a tire. And DeFeo is a guy after my own heart. Look at him sitting at his bench in a tweed sport coat and tie with a cat looking over his shoulder. I love this picture. He was born in Delaware in 1891. He always had an interest in the outdoors, but was quite an accomplished artist. He went to art school in Philadelphia and then in New York City, and in 1911, got a job painting the covers for Field and Stream. When World War I started, he tried to enlist in the Army, but at 106 pounds, they said he was too light, so he goes up to Canada and joins their Royal Air Corps and ends up flying cargo planes for them. When he gets back to the States, this time the U.S. Army did let him enlist, and he ends up driving motorcycles and delivering payroll to the troops in France. Then after the war, he comes back and goes to art school again, and ends up being a pretty well-known artist for the rest of his life, all the while continuing to fish and tie flies. And some of the flies in this book are truly amazing patterns. And of the 725 patterns in this book, I'd say more than half of them are out of my skill level. Maybe Fred Klein from Grizzly King Flies could handle them, but most of them I'm not even gonna try. But there were a few in here that did catch my eye, and these were mainly the flies that were Fairly easy to tie, but they just look like they're gonna catch fish. And the one I'm gonna do for you today, it's called the Red Butt Sedge. And if you recall, a sedge is just another name for a caddis. And this one, it's a pretty typical winged wet fly and using fairly common materials. But I think it'll work in any water that has a caddis fly population that you wanna swing wet flies. So there it is, Charles DeFeo's Red Butt Sedge. Now those wings right there are not that elegant. We'll see if we can do a little better this time. I'm tying this on a size eight. It's a one extra long, one extra strong, barbless wet fly hook. And I'll put a base of black thread down to where the barb would have been. Now let's put some wax on, and I'm gonna put some red wool for the, the butt. And I just took a few snips of red wool yarn, put it in my coffee grinder. You can see I didn't blend it perfectly, but that's fine, I'll just make sure I don't use any that isn't blended. Now let's just wrap this in, get a little taper if you can. I wouldn't worry too much about it if you don't. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Let's take our thread up just a little bit and catch in some peacock curl. Now I did not snip off the bitter ends, the brittle ends right here. And I'll tell you why. Put three or four wraps, and now I can just kind of break these off. You know, it might save you a few seconds. Now we'll catch this end back here to where we're gonna start wrapping it. And as I often do with multiple strands of Peacock Girl, I'll leave my thread hanging about halfway. And I'm not gonna spin this together. I'm just gonna wrap it up, and that thread will help hold them together if they started to spread out on me. Now catch it off up front, and I'm gonna have to snip these because, you know, I was getting toward the end of that peacock curl and it was, the stems were just a little bit thick, probably too thick to just break off. So let's go ahead and catch this in, leave our thread a little bit back for the next component, which is the collar hackle. Now I'm just using a feather from light brown hen here, and I'll just create a little tie-in point like this right here concave side toward the hook. A few wraps right here. This stem is pretty thin, so I can't put anything really tight, but what I will often do is just fold that back and then a few wraps over it. Leave my thread right there. Now we do have to snip this piece though. Now let's just take maybe three wraps right here. I think I, the one I had in the vise at the beginning, I might have 
had one too many wraps, but we'll be a little bit more sparse on this one, I think. Okay, that should be three wraps right there. Now trim or pull any that you have going crazy or just lick your fingers, pull them back and build this swept back wet fly head here. I think that'll work. Now just take some mottled turkey or any kind of mottled feather you have. Now if you want to catch them in on either side of the hook, just splay them out a little bit right there, kind of like that, and then slide them on. Sometimes I don't do this and just catch them straight onto the, the hook. But now I've got them a little bit on either side. I'll do a loose pinch wrap right there and pull up on this side right here. And take a look at what you've got. You've got a couple of tries to readjust that before these get too mangled up. If you don't like your position, I think we're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a few extra wraps and get those caught in and snip the front right here. Now do we need to adjust these? Eh, maybe they're not perfect up here, but I think we're gonna be just fine with that. Now just spend a few wraps cleaning up your head. Now I've got a few crazy looking fibers right there. I think that's for my thread. So I can either bury that with my head cement or just try to singe it off here in a minute. But before that, I'm gonna go ahead and do my whip finish. Now do we have any cleanup? Yeah, I've got a crazy fiber right here. I can either just not worry about it or, or try and pluck it out. And then, you know, maybe take care of those little ones right there. I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm just gonna snip them as close as I can get it and then put my head cement on it. So there we go, red butt sedge. Now those wings are certainly not any better looking than the one I had in the vise at the beginning. So that's the way it goes. You never get them perfect, but I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.